this video we're going to go over the JavaFX file chooser. I'm going to show you how to specify the file extensions to save and load, how to remember the starting directory, and obviously how to create the save and load file dialogs, including how to load multiple files from one dialog. Let's get started. In this discussion on the file chooser, we're going to start with our menu structure that we created in our previous tutorial on JavaFX menus. If you're interested in that, you can go back and watch how to create menus. And we're going to use these save and load buttons to open up our save and load dialog boxes. In order to do that, we need to have a file chooser. We're going to set the starting directory where the file chooser opens. This should be a directory that already exists, otherwise you will have problems. In order to open up the file dialog, we need an access to the main window and we're going to have to pass this reference to our file chooser in order for it to open and we can get this handle through referencing any widget or control that we have access to and we can you get the scene and then we can get the window the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give our file chooser a title this is our save dialog this will appear at the top of the dialog window and we'll also give our file chooser, when it opens, we're going to have it um, display an initial file name. This will be just a default file name that you're going to save. And the next thing we need to do is choose default extensions for our files. So what we need are extension filters and extension filters are going to automatically append that ex extension type to the file that you are saving so we'll add a couple of options here we're going to say new file chooser extension filter and what we're going to the way this works is you give it first a description so this would be a text file for example and then we would also give it the extension that you want to append so in this case it would be a txt file and you could create a list of these so we could go ahead and add another one and perhaps this one would be for pdf files and we would just create the uh, same type of situation with the dot PDF and these extensions will automatically be appended when the user chooses to save the file. Now we're ready to actually open up our file dialog. So we're almost done here. What's left uh, in this is to actually open up our dialog. So we need to show the save dialog and we're going to pass it the reference to the main window that we got earlier. Now this does actually return a file and we'll need to handle that and we're going to have to do a little bit of housekeeping here just to make sure that we don't encounter any errors now i'm not going to actually go through the saving of the file this would be to do you'll have to save the file and whatever um, mechanism you would like to, you know, you need to handle your file appropriately. Um, but what you can go ahead and do is we can grab the directory of our file and set that back as our default directory. So we can say file chooser and set the initial directory and we can say file and we can get the parent file. And this will actually um, save the chosen directory uh, for the next time that you open the save file dialog it'll come up with the same um, directory that the user selected now let's just show what this looks like 
So here we now have the save dialog hooked up and you can see that the save file defaults to the save name that I chose and I have a list of file types here that I can select between text files or PDF files. And then you would need to go through and handle the actual logistics of saving the contents of the file uh, appropriately. In order to wrap up our discussion on the file chooser, we need to handle loading of files. And this is going to be done in a very similar way. It's going to be a load dialog. We're still going to need the reference to the scene. Uh, we don't need the initial file name anymore. In this case, instead of the file extension filters being used to save a file to a default type, it's going to be used to um, determine what types of files are displayed in your load dialog. In this case, we might want to add a, a, some additional extensions. So let's go ahead and add um, some uh, star.doc files perhaps and some um, star dot old style docs and PDFs and then we'll, we'll go ahead and add images also so I can sh show you what this would uh, look like so let's do images and then we can do JPEGs and we can do uh, perhaps um, uh, PNGs, and you could do uh, GIFs, perhaps. So what will happen now is when we choose these different extension filters, the um, list of documents displayed will uh, be determined by what filter is selected here. In this case, um, the next thing we need to do is actually open our file chooser dialog instead of a save dialog. This time is going to be an open dialog. And again, we'll reset the initial directory based off of the user selection. And again, in this case, I'm not going to go through the actual loading of the file, but you have all the information you need in this file object to handle the loading as appropriate. So let's show you what this looks like now. So here we're going to choose the load file dialog. Here you see our selection filters. We can go ahead and choose our background images. And if we have the images selected, now you'll see that my background images will display as you would expect. There's one more thing I want to show you here, and that's if you would like to choose multiple files uh, to open. In that case, you would, instead of using the um, file chooser open dialog, you would choose the file chooser um, and you would instead choose the show the open multiple dialog and this would allow the user to select multiple files in the uh, dialog to and then you would get a list of files so let me just show you that uh, real quick so here what you would have is are we starting to pass up the stage so here, instead of getting a file, you would get a, a list of files. And so then what you would be able to do is, is iterate over this list and handle them appropriately. So that's all I want to go over for the file chooser dialog. I hope this has been helpful and we'll see you next time.